Okay, we've got a JBL 515 XT. We're just going to show you how to put it back together. Um, there's a couple of things you need to take into account, and if you get them wrong, it could be uh, quite disastrous. Okay, so um, we've got the amplifier module here mounted on the heatsink, and there's a separate video that shows you how to put it all back together uh, and the things to check and make sure the screws are all in and everything else. So we're assuming that you've checked that this, if you've fitted this back onto the heatsink yourself, that you've done it correctly. And you've checked the video. We've got these two wires here. These are these wires power the um, indicator, the JBL indicator on the front. There's an illuminated um, little icon in the front, which we switched on and off by a switch on the on the uh, rear panel. But these two. Also, we have this uh, this loom, which is the main uh, audio feed loom for the power amplifier. It needs to be unplugged at this stage when we're doing the first stage of assembly. And then if we move to the actual enclosure, we've got the two mains power supply wires, and just check that you've got a small crimp and a large crimp, okay, on the end here, because some of them have got two large crimps. And if you've got two large, the crimp on the back of the fuse holder is smaller and large. So if you've got two large, which I have seen, then you might find that the, um, the large one is a little bit loose on the small crimp on the back of the fuse holder. So that's something to bear in mind. Just check to make sure these are very good fit, these bay terminals. So we're going to lift this up now into position. Okay. Hold it there. And whilst holding it here, we're going to plug. Actually, the first thing to do is to feed the um, indicator feed cables through the aperture in the case down here. And get them through it's a bit awkward I'm holding so you can see okay so they're fed through these on the large connector which is the brown wire is live and it goes on the first one the lowest just hold it in position I can get that on there it's awkward doing it so you can see and then the neutral is a small connector and it goes on the outside and push them fully home and make sure they click home and give them a little tug to make sure they don't come off easily because I've seen them come off. Okay so feeding this wire down through there and also feeding the um, feed cable for the amplifier down through the hole and the speaker loom. We just gently lower this into place making sure nothing gets trapped and you may need to reach on do a bit of a reach around and pull the mains wires through okay. So we drop it down into position, and it's in position when it's flush. The top edge of the heatsink is level with the back of the case, okay? So holding that in position, we're just going to roll it over onto its back. Now you can see it, it holds it in place itself because the heatsink is resting on the table. So here we have our cables. The mains cable is here. Um, this uh, protective fiberglass braid sleeving goes under the edge of the metal casing uh, to stop the mains wires chafing on the earth casing during operation. I'll show you that in a moment, but make sure you put it back in position. So putting the mains connections back on, the two spade terminals down here are marked blue and brown. That's actually written on the board and you've got a blue and brown wire so that's fairly easy to put that back. So plugging those on. Once again make sure they're feeling nice and tight, which they are, and then slide this down so that when we put the other case on it is clamped underneath and protects the actual wiring from chafing. Okay. Right, another problem uh, you need to check before you assemble is that we have this wiring loom. We need to check sure the blue wires go to the tweeter and the green wires go to the base driver unit, okay? There are a couple of different designs. This one's the neodymium magnet design. There's a, an early, earlier version with a big magnet, but the connections are essentially exactly the same. Now, the problem with these connectors are that they, are, they can be very loose. This is a a 1.2 ohm driver and if there's a fraction of an ohm between the two connections then your speaker won't perform properly and may even damage the speaker and 
they can even drop off during the performance. Um, so when you fit them, you can see this is very loose. So take a pair of pliers and gently squeeze the connector to close up the contact slightly to give a better um, grip on the spade terminal itself. Now if we now put that one back on there, that's still not enough, I need to give it a little bit more. Just gently squeeze them. Nope, still not quite enough. I'm a little bit tighter than that even. I can't stress how important this is to get this correct. That's right, that's nice and tight now. And we can do the same with this one. Right. Right, that's really is very nice and tight now. Let's check these over here on the, on the HF drive unit. Again, very loose. You can't get these on the wrong way around um, because there's a large one and a small one, a six millimeter and an eight millimeter width crimp. Again, too loose. No, still too loose. Right, that's, that's better. And this one's okay, so we don't need to do this one. Right, so there we are. We've got the speaker loom is now attached and there is a tie wrap somewhere. It seems to be random where they place them, but holding the cables to stop them uh, vibrating loose. So there's a, usually a tie wrap, which makes it slightly awkward to assemble, but it should be in position. Okay, so that's that prepared. The next step on this assembly is to put the screening can uh, back over the amplifier. Under this corner here is a cutout, and that cutout clamps down onto the braid, onto the fiberglass braid which covers the mains wires, and make sure that braid is in position when you screw it down. This cable here, which is comes out just from the side. So just lay it in that position whilst you're putting the can on and then lower the can into position feeding the amplifier uh, output connections the speaker connector connector up through the slot just hold on to it there and it sort of should just about hold itself in position as you lower the, the can onto the case Okay. Now that's in position. The first job is to put those four screws in. So four screws to hold the amplifier output connector in position. Tighten those up. And then there's just a number of threaded black fasteners which go in around the outside of here to hold the can in position. These aren't self-tapping screws with a very coarse plastic cutting thread. These are actually machine screws which go into brass insert moulded um, bushes in this end and at that end they go into the heat sink. Ok, 
Okay, you don't need to do these up too tight, but you don't want them coming loose. It's just usual hand tightness, don't overdo it. Okay, so I'm just going to put the rest of these screws in and also there's screws that go in around this amplifier uh, unit down here as well. There's four screws that um, go straight into plastic housing. This part here, this one, has this support. If the support is fitted then that goes into that hole there on the can to just stop the mains wires from chafing. Again, I'm going to push that under gently. So I'm just going to complete now. I'm going to pause and complete that and we'll go on to the next stage in a moment. Okay, we've uh, put the threaded screws all the way around the periphery of this unit. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Is that right? Six, seven, yeah, eleven. And then there's two here, look, in the, at the end of the amplifier between the preamp and the amplifier. And they just use these little self-tapping screws. You can see, see that there. Yeah, you can see it anyway so these are just normal threaded into plastic so put those in don't tighten them down too tightly otherwise they'll just strip off which is not what you want in this situation other situations yes but not today right and then we've got the amplifier cable make sure there's as few twists in it as possible i think you do need to put one in to make it lay down flat yeah and it's keyed so you can't get it in the wrong way around and push it home make sure it's fully home nice and tight and then usually on here look there's a piece of what looks like gaffer tape which is supposed to be holding the amplifier down the cable down onto the lid just to stop it rattling about and doing what it shouldn't okay so everything's nice and tight, everything's in, it's ready to rock and roll for the next stage which is putting the fascia back on with the speaker units and drivers. Now you can see the cables are nowhere near long enough to reach in there so we're going to have to um, do a bit of a reach around to get to it. So um, I'm just going to get in position for that and then we'll continue film filming when I'm there. So one moment. Okay so we've got the unit um, in this position, I'm holding this because it's rolled back on its own. So holding that up. You've got your um, JBL icon light indicator here thing here, and the as you're looking at the base of the speaker, move it forward slightly and plug the red one in to the right side, and the black goes on the left side. Okay. Uh, don't forget if this is not working, don't forget there is a switch on the back, so you might not assume you've got the connections around the wrong way, but it might be just that you've um, got the switch switched off on the unit. So and then here's the main speaker connection loom. This, uh, this connector here, which was released by a small little lever, okay? You don't need to push that lever to plug it back in. And you just reach inside and plug the connector in until it's clicked and give it a pull to make sure it's locked, okay? Right, the next stage is you need this piece of deadening, deadening material to go inside the speaker case. And you just rest it over the top of everything, just like that. And try and keep the edges away from the from the uh, seams where the the joining edges so it doesn't get trapped. You might need to just lift it up again and push it back in if you can see it protruding through. You don't want it over the screw holes or anything. Okay, so okay now you lift this up, up and over. Okay, locating the speaker like that. Now, I'm going to spin this round now to show you something because I've done this before. In the base here are two rubber feet and the rubber feet are just held in by a ridge of rubber all the way around side and they go around the outside and it locates in a slot in the housing. So they're basically captive when the unit is screwed together. So just make sure those rubber feet are present and correct. Again, spin it round to make sure nothing's trapped in the seam where the two halves of the speaker join together. There's a, a lip that goes into a slot and it is properly, properly engaged everywhere. So holding it together, roll it over onto its back 
And then we've got these screws, these long self-tapping plastic screws which you took out during the assembly, this assembly. And we've got these screws here. And they're a T10 screw. Um, they are quite good, but you should use a good quality T10 at Torx bit to put them back in. Um, it's one of those things, if you just put it in the hill and uh, twiddle it with your fingers, you can find the old thread quite often and put them in quite easily. If you just jam them in and start screwing, uh, it'll, you know, it won't engage in the old thread. You'll have to cut a new thread. And if you do it by hand, it's probably quite onerous and you might as well do a little bit of feeling to start with, a bit of application and uh, just get the screws in. So put them in. I'll do a couple just to show you now. Um, can I do them by hand? I think I can. Can I? Yes, I can. So T10, in we go. And you just nip them up, not too tight. And you can put your finger there, you can feel the gap closing up. And when it stops closing up, stop screwing. Okay, so I'm gonna run around and do the rest. But um, that's it, that's the reassembly of the Eon uh, 515 uh, XT speaker. So I hope you find that useful.